Welcome to Table Talks. Topic. Horticultural Therapy. What is horticultural therapy? So in very simple terms, it's the active engagement of an individual or group in horticultural or nature-based activities facilitated by a trained therapist to achieve specific and documented goals. So there is a difference. Um, the Canadian um, Association, Canadian Horticultural Therapy Association, uh, defines the difference between hort therapy and therapeutic horticulture. So hort therapy is a formal practice that uses plants, horticultural activities, and the garden per and the garden landscape to promote well-being for its participants. It's goal-oriented with defined outcomes and assessment procedures. HP sessions are administered by professionally trained therapists. So, therapeutic horticulture is the purposeful use of plants and plant-related activities to promote health and wellness for an individual or group. Goals and defined outcomes for individual participants are not necessarily considered or clinically documented. So for our purposes tonight, I'm gonna to consider the terms to be interchangeable, um, but it, there is an important difference. Um, a horticultural therapist is expected to be part of the patient's treatment team, involved in their diagnosis and have the ability to create goals and objectives to achieve those goals. In reality, that's not always possible. For example, I work with many patients from Ontario Shores. And as I'm not an employee of Ontario Shores, it wouldn't be appropriate for me to have access to the patient's medical diagnosis. However, I do know the units that the patients are in, and I can create broad goals, which often focus on self-esteem, working together with others, encouraging patients to participate in the natural world, and to foster a sense of hope for the future. So horticultural therapy is planned, deliberate, and documented. An important distinction is that the process forms the therapeutic activities rather than the final product. It's concerned with the needs of the individual and the whole person rather than with a disease or disability. It focuses on aspirations and skills rather than deficits and symptoms. What sets it apart from other therapeutic programs is that it uses living material requiring nurturing and care. It also encourages an awareness of the living external environment. So we're gonna talk a little bit about the goals and benefits of hort therapy. Intellectual benefits include learning new skills and perhaps regaining lost skills, improving memory and attention, improving vocabulary and communication skills, arousing a sense of curiosity or awe, it enables increased powers of observation, stimulates sensory perception, including vision, hearing, touch, and smell. It fosters a sense of productivity, self-satisfaction, and responsibility. Social benefits include increased social interaction with others, learning to work together, sharing and communicating effectively, and working towards common goals. Emotional growth is seen in improved confidence and self-esteem, in part by allowing choices and responsibilities. For participants who are usually the care receiver, with plants, they are allowed to give the care to them. Court therapy also provides relaxation and enjoyment, increasing feelings of calm, creating opportunities to relieve aggressive drives in a socially acceptable manner, providing activities that promote interest and enthusiasm for the future and encouraging creative expression. Physical benefits include an increase in physical activity and development and improvement of basic motor skills. Exercise tends to be more fun when it's purposeful and having more fun results in more exercise. In physical rehabilitation, court therapy benefits include increasing strength and endurance, including hand functions such as grip strength and fine motor dexterity, eye-hand coordination, range of motion, and balance. 
So I saw this quote in the West Coast Seed Catalog, and I just thought it was so appropriate um, for so much of what I do and for what I believe. Um, you always have a second chance. Gardening is both forgiving and for giving. The gifts range from learning a skill, producing food and flowers, building a home for insects and birds, to being immersed in a world you created and can make mistakes in. I always like to emphasize, emphasize to participants that I'm working with that nature doesn't judge. It's a safe place to learn and make mistakes. There is not necessarily a right or wrong and mistakes are merely opportunities for learning. So a couple of the groups um, that I work with, I'm just gonna use these for some examples of things that we do, goals that we set. Um, heart therapy in dementia. Um, since I've been at Windreach since 2017, um, Alzheimer's uh, Durham has been a big participant in our programs. Um, some of the things that we look to do is to engage and enliven the participant's ability to recall past garden memories, verbally share the remembrances with others, to focus on individuals recall and recognition of plant material. Um, the color red um, is really important sometimes in dementia. It's something they recognize. So we will use things like sweet peas, geraniums, um, anything to, to cue people to something that they might have a memory of. Um, we try and orient participants to a particular season. Um, for example, um, the sweet peas, as you can see in this picture, which tend to bloom early in the year, can sometimes trigger those memories that it's spring. Um, we also want to promote exercise and movement and growth and fine motor skills. Or therapy in trauma or mental health. Uh, individuals with trauma or mental health issues can have thoughts that trigger responses, sounds, smells, taste, and tactile sensations can create somatic flight, fight, or freeze responses. The somatic nervous system is autonomic. It's like breathing or your heart rate. You don't really control it. It just happens. Um, so physical restlessness, hypervigilance, numbing, or disassociation, and the inability to recognize one's own somatic state frequently cause trauma survivors to feel they can't trust their own body. And they often react to non-traumatic events as if they were in danger again. In the garden, the smell of an herb or the feel of a flower can be the starting point to ask, where in your body do you notice your response to that? Calming rhythmic activities such as mixing potting soil with amendments, stirring compost tea, or digging a hole create a soothing counterpart to the fight or flight response. Growing new plants from seed or from cuttings provides a sense of ownership and engages participants to focus on the future with hope. Port therapy affords a more integrated and broader experience of recovery involving reciprocal healing relationships, not just between the client and the therapist, but also potentially with our wider community, society, and ultimately our world. So a little bit about Windreach Farm, for those of you who may not be familiar with it. Um, Windreach Farm is located um, in Townline Road, in Ash on, on Townline Road, in Ashburn, Ontario. It is a 105 acre working farm. It was founded by Sandy Mitchell, who was born with cerebral palsy. He recognized early in life the value and impact of an accessible farm and natural environment for individuals with special needs of all ages. He was a three-time equestrian Paralympian. His vision to inspire, empower, and change lives turns ordinary experiences into extraordinary experiences for the visitors and program participants. So there are a number of programs offered at Windreach besides Hort Therapy, but in our Hort Therapy program, we endeavor to work closely with all the other programs. Um, Learning for Life, is a day program that runs year round for adults with disabilities. Um, and we work, uh, we provide once a month, we provide um, court therapy every day of the week for an hour a day. Um, and it's a great learning experience for the participants. 
They have um, three of their own raised beds in our gardens that they grow the plants and care for them throughout the growing season. And of course, get to enjoy the harvest. They make salsas and um, all kinds of interesting things from all the different plants that they harvest. Windridge Farm also has therapeutic and recreational horseback riding for individuals with special needs. Um, the HORT program works together with the therapeutic riding program in a high school program called SHISM, which is the Specialist High Skills Major. It's a specialized program that allows students to gain credits towards their Ontario Secondary School Diploma and focus their learning on a specific economic sector at the same time. The Community Participation Program provides individuals with special needs the opportunity to explore possibilities and sets them on a course to develop their full potential. A couple other programs um, is the Homespun Wool Program. This image here is after um, one of our sheep has been sheared. We have um, a number of sheep on the farm. In fact, in the last two weeks, we had 17 lambs born. It's a pretty exciting time of the year. The end of April, we'll shear the sheep, um, and the wool program involves the shearing, washing and drying, teasing, carding, spinning, and dyeing. And for their dyeing process, they use mainly plant-based dyes from plants that we grow in our hort therapy gardens. Beyond the Farm Gate is an innovative program that incorporates all that the farm has to offer into a mobile service, which visits users with small animals out in the community. And of course, our Harvest of Health Horticultural Therapy Program. So Horse Therapy at Windreach Farm, the fully accessible facilities include a year-round greenhouse, a seasonal hoop house, an indoor classroom, raised garden beds, in-ground garden beds. And this year we're uh, starting a cut flower farm, which we're pretty excited about. Program participants include those in stroke recovery, dementia, long-term care, acquired and traumatic brain injury, geriatric psychiatry, forensic psychiatry, eating disorders, and general psychiatric disorders. So this is an example of some of the adaptations that we have available at Windreach. This is called a terraform bed, and it is wheelchair accessible. So a participant can wheel up basically under this structure, and then they can garden while they're seated at a comfortable level. Uh, we currently have two terraform beds at the farm. Now, I, I have to chuckle at this picture because I wanted a picture of using some of our adaptive tools, and I realized when I was putting this presentation together that I didn't have any. So yesterday, I went out in the garden and there I am sitting in my winter coat, um, just illustrating what these um, tools are, are and how they can be used. So we have several foldable guarding kneeling, um, our seating bench, this bench, I'm sure most of you are probably familiar with it. You can sit on it or you can flip it over and you can kneel on it. Um, these adaptable, adaptive garden tools have a unique handle design that helps prevent injury to hand and wrist while maintaining a more natural grip. And attached to it is an arm support cuff that allows the strength of the forearm and upper arm to be used. Now you can be quite inventive. You don't necessarily have to purchase um, adaptive tools like these. You can merely wrap some foam around the handle of a tool to make it easier for people to grip. You can add extensions to some of the um, garden tools that you existing that you already have in your equipment, um, just to enable people that may have some physical disabilities um, to better be able to garden. These are just a very small sampling of some of the projects that we've done at Windreach. So this one on the left, um, it's called a seed art quilt. And the participants are each given um, kind of a recipe index card and they create their own pattern. And after it's done, we glue them all together and it's supposed to um, mimic a quilt. Um, this is a great 
indoor project if the weather isn't good. Um, and it's also great for eye-hand coordination. This center um, is a herb bouquet. We invite participants to go around the farm to pick either plants that are growing there or some herbs and just make a small bouquet that they can take with them. The one on the right is one of my favorite projects and we're currently doing right now. It's called a nesting bundle. This is another great one when I talk about orienting um, participants to the um, time of year, to the season. So these are merely pine cones that we stuff with um, sanitized chicken feathers, um, moss that we pick around the farm, bits of wool from our sheep, and then we hang them in the trees and the birds will come and um, pick material to build their nests from them. And the first time we did this program and, and hung them in the trees, it was within a matter of minutes that a chickadee came along and plucked a piece of wool. So those kind of things are pretty exciting for participants to be um, viewing the world in a larger context. So how could heart therapy relate to a working garden project? Um, by definition, in order to facilitate hort therapy, a trained therapist is required. However, if we're going to think in broader terms about creating a space for reflection and mindfulness, um, I was fortunate enough to be a member of the Whitby Ajax Community Garden last season. Simply being in that space felt therapeutic every time I was there. How often, however, often there were many tasks that needed to be completed, and my focus would be on completing those tasks more than taking the time to be mindful. So I think as a, as a working garden, if you can have a space to encourage people to sit quietly, observe the many pollinators who visit the garden, to maybe close your eyes, absorb the scent, the sounds, to be more aware in a thoughtful way of how the Good soil joke. feeds between their fingers. All of these experiences are involved in hort therapy. Um, signs are also really important. I love we have a number of signs to encourage people to touch the earth and to smell them. This is one of my uh, favorite pictures. Um, it's another sign that we have at Windreach. And of course we have a barn cat who has lots of kittens, one of the kittens on the sign. So this encourages people, um, if there isn't a heart therapy oh, program going on at the time, we have lots of people yep. who book visits and who come to the farm and um, so they may be just wandering through the gardens. And so that's why we have these signs that say herb gardens, they're plants that smell, they taste good, they're used in cooking. You can touch these plants, you can smell these plants. So we encourage people to fully participate in the plants that are growing at the farm. Raised beds are a great way to bring therapeutic horticulture into a, a um, working garden. I know they're not always possible. They can be costly to build, um, but they definitely make a big difference for those with mobility issues. Quite frankly, they make a big difference even for myself because it's much easier not to be getting down on the ground all the time. We have both raised beds that have a ledge around people can sit on. We try and keep the paths as, as clean as possible. And we also have elevated beds that are actually at waist height that make it really easy for people to work in them. Sensory plants are a great thing to have um, in the garden. I know that the Whitby Ajax Community Garden has an herb garden. Um, if you can incorporate sensory plants into raised beds if you have them, or if not, maybe set aside an area where you can plant some of the herbs that you want people to touch and smell and be aware of in accessible pots. And perhaps occasionally have a therapist or a knowledgeable volunteer available to provide learning opportunities to members of the garden or to the general public if you wish to invite them into your garden. So in summary, as gardeners, we've all experienced how therapeutic just being outside in nature can be, getting your hands in the soil, growing food or beautiful flowers. Sometimes we need to have a guide or to be reminded to slow down and to appreciate the healing power of nature. 